Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about a setup to answer a question from a gentleman called Raven FPV. Now what he's trying to do is move the aileron and elevator controls that he's normally using to fly his fixed wing model onto a pan and tilt gimbal at the flick of a switch. So that's probably going to be useful if you're having something like an autopilot, so Arduplane or iNav, uh, and you're having an autonomous flight, or maybe it's just loitering, flying around in a circle in the sky, you can kind of flick over to a gimbal to have a look around. Now, as well as using something like this, you could also use a head tracker inside your goggles so that the camera actually tracks where you're looking and you could turn that on as well. And check out my head tracker setup videos. I'll put links below. But Raven FPV, I think, has fallen into a common trap that lots of pilots do when they're coming into OpenTX. And that is that because OpenTX is so complicated, you can overthink the problem a little bit. So this video is to hopefully show a couple of ways that this can be done. And also to remind everybody that actually everything that I'm going to cover in here is already in the OpenTX Mix School. So do check that out if you're new to OpenTX. Go and start at the beginning. It starts very simply explaining the differences between OpenTX, Spectrum, and Futaba. Then goes through all the basic parts of the menu system and how you set those up. And then goes into individual examples of how you actually set up specific things for specific models. So let me show you the the examples that I have here and I'll show you how I've got them set up. So here's a virtual Tyrannus radio and the elevator and aileron are moving channels two and three. So there's the wing flying around or the plane, whatever it is. And then the flick of a switch, those two controls move to two different outputs. And those two different outputs could be where the servo uh, for pan and the servo for tilt for the gimbal for the FPV camera will be plugged in. And then when you've had enough of that, you pop the control back and there we go now there is also another way a slightly more sophisticated way and i am going to cover that as part of this video again everything that i'm covering in here is already covered in the open ticks mix school so um, this time it's exactly the same elevator aileron channels two and three and then when switch sf is moved moves to channel seven and eight however you might have spotted the difference this time it actually says on the screen what mode I'm in, whether I'm in kind of normal flight mode or whether I've jumped into gimbal control. Now that second way is a little bit more complicated. It's using flight modes. Don't worry, I'm going to cover all this and show you how to set it all up. Uh, but that can be handy when you have really complicated um, configurations where you might have one for um, mapping, one for landing, one for takeoff with flaps at different positions and different expo rates and all kinds of stuff. You can kind of hang all that off the flight modes and it makes it very easy to change things. Okay, so let's just create a brand new model this time. I'll show you how I've done it. So here we have our new model. The um, mixes look exactly as you'd expect. Throttle, aileron, elevator and rudder. But what you can do is you can actually add a switch assignment to each of these mixes to do certain things. So uh, SF in the back position. Um, I would always use the switch in the, uh, the back or most upright position because that's the way that the switch is detected at power on. If it isn't in that position, the radio will warn you. And for flight controls, I would always have it that way so that you can't accidentally try and fly the plane with the switch in the wrong position. So now that will only work when SF is in the back position. So let's do the same for this one, SF. The back position there we go now what i can do is right click so copy uh, copy those onto the two channels paste uh, copy let's pop it in there paste and just change the switch so sf in the front position now if you are using a three position switch then i wouldn't actually um use uh, SF in the back and SF in the front position, I'd actually use something slightly different. Uh, it, this one works because it's a two position switch. It's either going to be one or the other. If you're going to use a three position switch, what I would do is I'd actually use the exclamation mark SF back position because what that says 
is that when switch F is not in the back position, then this is active, which is kind of the same for a two position switch. But in a three position switch, it means that when SF is in the back position, the normal flight controls will work. When it's in any other position, then it will be the other way around. So be careful of that with three position switches. So let me just complete that. So there we go. So that's how we've got it set up. And we can simulate that. And again, SF in the back position. There we are flying around, channels two and three, put it on SF, bang, there we go, we have the gimbal. Now the other thing of course with this is that we can mess things around in here. So we can say we might have um, an offset. So we might say that it needs to be like that. It needs to only move that much. Um, because we can really play with exactly where we need everything so that the although the, the input the control is the same the mixer will change how it works so what's happening here is in normal flight mode we get full deflection of all the channels for flying our uh, flight controller because i wouldn't recommend doing it this way without a flight controller in your model and in an sf then look we get much less movement that's just moving the gimbal about and that's because what we've done is we've changed in these two lines how much weight and also offsets as well uh, for the camera so that's the really really simple way let's do another model and i'll show it you with flight modes now again flight modes um, are one of those fantastic things that you can use for really complex model setups that simplify the configuration and then the any additional editing that you do after the fact so we'll call the normal flight mode the default normal and we'll call flight mode one let's call it fpv and then we're going to assign it to a switch and guess what we're going to put the switch We'll use the same one, S, F in the front position. Okay, let's simulate that. So now as SF moves, we have normal and FPV. It isn't going to change the way the controls works because we haven't set any of that up. But I like flight modes because it does that. Now what we can do in the mixes is we can do something similar. Whereas before we just assigned the turning it on and off uh, to a switch, we can actually say that these, because these are all the different flight modes that we can have, that this is only active when flight mode zero, i.e. normal, because that's what we called it, you can call it whatever you want, is on. So let me just finish this off, there we go, bonk. So when flight mode normal is activated, then this is where aileron and elevator are gonna come out. So again, we can copy, paste them into here but this time we're going to make it for flight mode one there we go now if we simulate it there we go normal mode flying around move the switch and there we have the same thing now again we can do the same thing we can change the weights we can do all those things to change how much the gimbal moves where the midpoint is all that stuff so uh, those are the two ways that I would do it if I'm setting this up uh, if it's a, a relatively simple model I would then just use this switch setting so that with this uh, with the switch in one position it's going to give you flight controls when it's not in that position which is what the exclamation mark means it gives you the gimbal control uh, however if it's going to be a more complicated setup you're going to have lots of other things um, then I personally would do it using flight modes because then you can very very easily set it up and the really cool thing is it actually shows you the name of the flight mode that you're hanging everything off so it helps you keep track of really complicated mixes so Raven hopefully that answers the question for you and hopefully it's been a gentle reminder that the OpenTX mixing school exists again links in the description go and check it out and as always happy flying Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. 
Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.